Uh, Y'all may have heard of a um, terrible accident that happened in, back in 1979 at a Who concert in Cincinnati. Um, what happened was uh, it was a venue uh, concert hall. Um, I think they were, they didn't open the doors when they had planned to. It was a general admission show, so people knew that in order to get a good spot, they had to get there early. Uh, you know, there's no reserved seats or limitations on how many people could be on the floor and that sort of thing. So when they do, did open the doors, a lot of other things happened that turned it into a terrible accident. And I think um, 11 people actually died in that, and it was a, it was a crowd crush. Uh, they opened the doors, people pushed to get in. They didn't open all the doors. They didn't have enough doors open, so people were pushing against what they thought was going to be, you know, a door that was going to open, and it didn't. Um, they even apparently opened some doors and then closed them again. So whoever was in charge um, really had not planned well. They didn't know the crowd. Um, they didn't know how they were going to react and how, you know, eager maybe they were going to be to get into that show. Uh, they didn't communicate with the crowd at all. They didn't let them know maybe that doors were opening late and why. So they were starting to get a little antsy and uh, frustrated. Um, that definitely had something to do with it. Um, so un unfortunately, sometimes it takes terrible accidents like that for people to sit down and figure out all the things that they should, um, that they should know about. Apparently that venue had had problems before, but it wasn't that serious, so they hadn't sat down and had a plan to figure out what to do. Maybe the people that managed the venue were not experienced with that particular type of crowd or large shows in general. So they really just didn't have uh, the resources they needed to make the decisions that they needed to make along the way that maybe could have stopped that from happening. Um, they could have done, you know, several things. They could have. Uh, first of all, opening the show late was, was a bad move. Um, you know, opening more doors, that, all those kinds of things that they could have done, letting the crowd know what was going on could have alleviated that situation. There are some interesting um, reports uh, that you can find on the internet as well. I think crowdsafe.com. Uh, is a good website and safeconcerts.com and uh, they're really pretty interesting. They talk a lot about, um, uh, they have a lot of fan interaction. Uh, they have advice for people going to an event, what to be, you know, what to look out for and you can find these reports that there was a report done after this incident. Um, there were some other major reports done in Europe after some uh, European tragedies so they go in and they study all the things that went wrong and they talk about what, you, what they can do in the future to keep those things from happening again. In 2003, there were two events that happened th within three days of each other. I'm sure you all heard of the, um, the incident that happened in Rhode Island, a band called Great White, I believe. And uh, it was a very small venue. It was the capacity of the venue was only 300. It was just some club kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And the band had um, pyrotechnics set up on the stage. And they set the ceiling on fire. The club caught on fire. It spread really quickly. They, it was an older building. They did, weren't required to have a sprinkler system. And uh, again, people panicked when they realized they had to get out of there. They generally, um, uh, the club, in fact, had plenty of exits. The exits were lit and marked and so on, but with the heavy smoke, you couldn't see the exit signs, and people were not familiar with the other exits. They just turned around and tried to go out the same way they had come in. So it ended up with um, a lot of people getting trampled. 90-something people got killed and out, of a, out of a club that only held 300, so um, that's pretty scary. Um, but again, looking at those, uh, looking at what happened, who was at fault. In that case, the band was found to be um, was found to be primarily at fault because they had not gotten the proper permits or even notified the club that they were going to use pyrotechnics. Uh, the club manager had said nobody had ever talked to him about it, and if they had, he would not have allowed them to do it. 
um, for obvious reasons. So, um, so in that case, the band and their management was was held responsible for that. So, again, doesn't seem like you might be, you know, responsible for uh, something like that, but everybody is. Um, you know, you have to be aware of everything when you go into a venue. It's it's your responsibility as well. Um, yeah. Would it be liable in a situation where it's just the crowd getting out of hand? Is that a security problem or management? Well, um, generally there's going to be a reason why they got out of hand. I mean, if just somebody started a fight or something like that. Um, there was an incident not too long ago where um, it was in a dance hall <laughs> and the... Um, DJ was having a problem with some with some people, um, you know, getting rowdy or starting a fight or something. And he actually brought security over and told security to pepper spray him. And that caused a whole, a panic because in a big, you know, bunch of people, if you pepper spray somebody, more than one person is going to get going to get affected. So the people in the immediate area then panicked and trying to get away from it, um, they caused a, a crowd crush. So in that case. The DJ, first of all, should not have tried to tell security how to deal with it. Security should not have, they should have had their own means of dealing with something like that. Using pepper spray in a, in a crowd of people is not really a good idea. So maybe they weren't trained properly. And so again, that just exacerbated the whole situation. So whenever something happens, they're going to analyze every little thing and they're going to look at every person involved and they're going to try to spread the liability to as many people as they possibly can. So. Um, again, knowing what your risks are, planning for those risks are going to, you know, you're going to be covered in the end when something, you know, if something does happen, if you've done everything that you can possibly do um, to prevent that.